Hey there, everyone. This is Dan from the Strength Coach Tutor. Today, we're going to go over some sports psychology topics surrounding positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to compare reinforcement versus punishment. So let's discuss really what reinforcement versus punishment, what do they mean? What are their definitions? So reinforcement reinforcement means to increase the likelihood of a behavior occurring again. So something we, if someone did a certain behavior or, or action, we were wanting that behavior to occur again in the future. So that's reinforcement. Punishment on the opposite side of the spectrum is when we want to decrease the likelihood of a behavior or action occurring again. So we want to diminish that, uh, what I want to say, the uh, likelihood of that event occurring again. And so, as we know, if you've read through, I believe, chapter eight of the fourth edition of the Central Substrate Conditioning textbook, let me just double check here, it is chapter eight, yes, that chapter touches on basically all the uh, relevant topics of sports psychology for us strength conditioning coaches. And so, they discuss positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment. And so, what do these really mean? And I think, what's, before we kind of talk about these individually, we also have to talk about what positive versus negative, what are their definitions in this context? And so what positive means, positive means to add something, to add something to influence reinforcement or punishment. And then negative is referring to taking something away to whether, we're not, whether or not we're trying to uh, reinforce or punish uh, some sort of behavior. So let's go over each of these individually and give some examples of them as well. So for example, positive reinforcement uh, definition for positive reinforcement is to add something to increase the likelihood of a behavior uh, to reoccur again in the future. So what I mean by that, or an example, is that let's just say uh, you're working with a, a group of athletes in your strength conditioning weight room, and you know the effort that they're giving during their workout is excellent. You know they're they're listening well, they're receiving instructions very well, they're giving great effort during their workouts, and so you know what, you wanna reward their efforts. You want them to increase the likelihood, of, the likelihood of their behavior happening again in the future and future workouts, right? You want them to always and consistently be pushing on themselves and to give that 100% effort. And so as a result, to increase the likelihood of this behavior, you decide to allow each athlete to take an extra post-workout snack, if you will. You know, whether, whatever it is, maybe you have in your facility, you allow them to take an extra post-workout snack to show them like, hey, you guys did a great job. I want you guys to continue this behavior in the future. So therefore I'm adding, I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna allow them to take a uh, extra post-workout uh, snack after their workout session, all right? So um, in this situation, in terms of positive, I'm adding the post-workout snack and the re reinforcement is referring to the behavior that I'm trying to increase the likelihood of it occurring in the future, that's them giving their 100% effort. Now let's move on to negative reinforcement, okay? So negative reinforcement is where I'm trying to remove something to increase the likelihood of a behavior uh, so it can reoccur, or it's more likely to reoccur in the future. So for example, say you're running a workout and you have some extra conditioning or sprints planned at the end of the workout, right? Um, but we'll use the same example. We're trying to, let's just say, the behavior is to give that 100% effort during um, uh, the workout, right? You, you realize that's the behavior that you want to uh, reinforce. That's the behavior you, that you want to happen in the future. So as a result, you decide to take away. You said, you know what? You guys give such a great effort during today's workout. I'm going to cancel those uh, sprints that we had scheduled at the end, that actual conditioning we had at the end. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to take that away, right? I'm removing it. So that way I'm going to more likely uh, see this behavior occur in the future where you guys are giving your best effort during the workout itself. All right. So again, I'm taking something away to increase the likelihood of that behavior uh, of, re of it to reoccur in the future. Now let's move on to the punishment, punishment side of things. So again, punishment means that we're trying to decrease the likelihood of something uh, of happening in the future. So positive punishment means I'm going to add something to decrease the likelihood of a behavior uh, from reoccurring. So let's just say um, you're, uh, you can say all, uh, a bunch of your athletes, uh, you found out that they all went out uh, drinking the night before uh, your early morning work, right? Let's just say you had a 6 a.m. Uh, workout schedule and you know, uh, you know, it was Friday night and you got reports that they all went out drinking and partying and so forth. 
we're out late. And so, of course, you want to decrease the likelihood of this behavior happening, right? You don't want them to always be going out drinking and partying. So for especially, um, you know, the night before a workout, right? Or even a game for that matter. So what I'm going to do is that I'm, in terms of positive punishment, I'm going to add something to this situation. So you know what? Because I want to decrease the likelihood of this behavior happening in the future, I'm going to add on extra sprints or conditioning at the end of this workout. So there, therefore, I'm adding something, I'm adding those sprints to decrease the likelihood of them drinking and partying before a workout again. All right. With negative punishment, let's just say in this situation, I'm going to remove something from the situation to decrease the likelihood of a behavior uh, happening again. So let's just say, for example, the same scenario, a bunch of your athletes had gone out drinking and partying or up late uh, the night before an early morning workout. And so if you want to decrease the likelihood of this behavior, something that you could remove, you could remove uh, giving them their post-work their post-workout snack or you can remove one of their water breaks, um, something of that nature. You're, you're removing something from the situation. You're taking something away, whether it's, again, the examples I were giving were you remove a water break or you remove their post-workout snack, whatever it may be, uh, to decrease the likelihood of them going out and partying uh, the night before a workout again. All right. So guys, this was a quick overview of reinforcement versus punishment and kind of going into more detail of how positive and negative play into these uh, factors as well. All right. If you guys would like more information or more details or even practice questions on these uh, topics or any topic uh, for the NSCA CSS exam, please head to the strengthcoachtutor.com and join our online classroom where we have uh, over 20 practice quizzes and a full length practice exam and tons of videos to help you guys uh, prepare for your exam. Or if you guys need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one help, you can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session with me to get all of your individual questions answered. All right, thanks guys for watching today's video and make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe so that way you guys can keep getting more of my content that I'm helping you guys uh, prepare for your exam. Thanks again for watching. See you later.